Stephanie, thanks so much for doing this. So you are a dairy farmer out of Tennessee. You moved your family farm from California to Tennessee. Why did you do that? Biggest thing was regulations and water availability. The state of California, as we know, is run by crazy people. And so agriculture is the number one agriculture county is in California. And a lot of people don't realize that. They see Los Angeles, they see San Francisco, but our food supply and our food security is so important and farmers and ranchers around this country. So the biggest thing was, you know, we wanted to see sustainability. We wanted our family farm to last and it wasn't gonna happen in California. So we had to move and we picked our spot in Tennessee. And you moved all the equipment and everything? I mean, that must have been like quite an effort, but has it been worth it? Yeah, so actually we moved in 2013, so we're coming up on like nine years. Wow. Um, two years ago we built a family creamery, so we actually make our own ice cream and our own cheese, and so we have a whole store where people can visit. And it's been a really good experience because honestly, like Franklin and Nolensville and all of those cities around, like the moms and you know the families come out and educate themselves, and I do farm tours and farmers markets, and so I don't think we could have picked a better location. So. Being a farmer, you obviously have, are experiencing some of the effects of this administration. Everyone's hurting right now with the economy, with gas prices. How has your family farm specifically been hurt? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us has been feed costs and you know resources. Uh, the Biden administration has really done nothing to you know ensure that we are getting the supplies that we need, whether it's a tractor part for harvest season or maybe it's minerals that we can't get because American grown is not really happening. Farmers and ranchers are going out of business. So being able to find supplies so we can run our dairy farm efficiently has been a struggle. And also, you know, prices everybody's facing high fuel and diesel prices. So, you know, when it comes to farming and during harvest season, we're filling up those tractors and we're still, you know, wanting to supply food for Americans, but it's definitely a challenge. And are those costs, I mean, you're having to push them down to the consumer. Have you noticed a decline in some of your products being purchased? Actually, ever since COVID happened, more people are buying locally. They're looking at the labeling, they're looking at maybe where it's coming from, and I think, you know, as, as agriculture, we can do a better job of labeling the small independent family farmers and where the product is actually coming from. But the biggest thing is not being paid enough for our product. So in the grocery store, you know, bacon went up, I think, 35% but pork farmers aren't getting that difference, just the big grocery stores. So I think we can do a better job at paying our farmers and ranchers to make sure that they're staying in business. So I've, I see uh, fertilizer costs in the news. What's going on there? So for us, because we're a dairy farmer, we uh, reuse a lot of stuff. So for us, it doesn't really affect us. But let's say for a crop farmer in Illinois that needs fertilizer for the crop, let's say they're not getting enough water, that's nutrients that those plants need. And so uh, as we look at you know, the Russia and Ukraine situation, they are a big supplier of fertilizer and wheat. So you know, as a family farmer and rancher in America, there is a food security that is not being paid attention to in both countries to sustain you know, Americans and what they need every day. 